I don't fuck Jesus Christ. Okay, they have fucked up yet again. Jesus Christ in heaven. Yeah, and yes, that's my green light. I like my green light. You don't like it, blow me. Anyway. Sorry, I'm actually holding the camera this time, and this is not fucking easy while I'm talking. Um... Okay, what I don't get, and this touches on the WWE CM Punk angle. You bring him back two weeks after the fucking pay-per-view? Oh my god in heaven. What the fuck? God damn Christ on a stick. Alright, like I said in the previous video, I don't like random people just giving their opinions on YouTube, but again, I guess I've become what I hate. Again, I don't know their credentials, maybe they do know somebody in the wrestling video, I don't know, okay? All I do know is, I've watched, I've been around wrestling since the day I was born. Both of my older brothers have, since the day they were born, and my oldest brother is very good friends with somebody who is in the wrestling business and still talks to a lot of wrestlers to this day. And in that time, I have also learned to pick up on a lot of stuff. I've learned a lot of stuff about, you know, how the business works and everything and good and bad angles and revenge or so. So, I, mean, I again, just from what I've picked up, and maybe this, this just seems to be the consensus of what I'm reading on message boards online and everything. They fucked up monumentally. You bring the motherfucker back two weeks after the goddamn pay-per-view. I mean, I love CM Punk. I love that he's back. I love that he's on TV every fucking week and actually gives me a reason to watch Raw. Besides, so I don't have to... So I can, like, blank out and, like, stop listening to fucking Michael Cole and his vintage. Vintage, shut the fuck up. You turn that into a drinking game. Hmm. Every time you say vintage, I take a shot. I'll be drunk five minutes into the show. And I'll pass out and hopefully wake up in time for punk. Anyway. It's... Why would you bring him back two weeks after the pay-per-view? When me and my brother were watch, my older brother, one of my older brothers, was watching the pay-per-view, after Punk won, he looked at me and said, you know what I'd have him do? And this was a great idea. In my opinion, anyway. Just God knows everybody's opinion differs. He looked at me and he said, you know, I'd have Punk, I'd give Punk the rest of the year off. I'd have him go around the world with that title to Ring of Honor, New Japan. I'd have him go over, go over to Europe and defend it everywhere. Well, obviously with the condition that he didn't lose it. So he could come back around, you know, Royal Rumble, Road to WrestleMania time and say, look, I've beaten everybody all over the world. I... I can't, I left your company with this title. This, for the first time in history, is truly the world title. And that was a great idea. And he goes, you know what? I'd even send him to TNA, have him buy a ticket and sit front row. With the belt. He goes, what would they do? They, they'd fucking put him on camera. And that was a great idea, in my opinion. Like I said, as far as the wrestling business goes, I'm like, I'm, in my family, I'm like fourth down the list. But anyway, so they they fucking they killed it. They absolutely killed that angle, bringing it back two weeks after the goddamn pay per view and giving Cena the fucking title back. Yeah, big congratulations, Rey Mysterio. Hey, right, thanks for being there. We need you now. Give the title back to Cena. What? 
That was a wit. You could take that as you wish. I have nothing against Cena. I think he could put on a decent match. But why the fuck is he always in the title picture? Like Miz. Miz was in Miz won the title, held it for a while, dropped it, and he went out and he and he jobbed to Riley a couple times so they Riley could get a semi push, if you would call it that. But it's something up I actually thought when I heard the cult of personality on Raw that. I was going to see, like, uh, the Kings of Wrestling and Cole Cabana come out and, like, jump Cena. Because there was, like, a, a two-minute period there. Like, it wasn't two minutes, but there was a short period there where just nobody was coming out. And Cena was just looking around, like, what the fuck is going on? No, I really thought they were just going to come out and, like, jump Cena. But I, I, I was happy to see Punk on one hand, because Punk is, like, the best wrestler today. And I'm not... I, I'm not... I don't... It's not like a line from TV or anything. Punk is one of the best today. But. That's really all I have to say. As far as me and people I know's feelings toward the Punk situation. They, they fucked it up again. Why would. Two fucking weeks seriously. We back at SummerSlam. We can make a Survivor Series! Oh, like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Can't bring him back Survivor Series. Can't overshadow Dwayne. Christ, you fucking tooth fairy. Anyway. There's... Okay, I, I have to get off the punk subject, because I'm going to ramble and feel like a whole fucking video. And I only have three minutes left. But, um... To my YouTube account only permits about 10 minutes, so I've got 3 minutes left. Anyway, um, the only thing I wanted to touch on was the Norway shooting bombing thing. Yes, I am one of those conspiracy theorists that the government looks at you, looks at the general public, and says, if You're a conspiracy theorist, you're a terrorist. And everybody's like, Oh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Anyway, things that don't add up. The government office was bombed on a holiday when it was virtually empty. Norway supported a Palestinian state, announced they weren't giving any more bailout money to Greece, and announced they were pulling all their planes out of Libya. And to NATO, and to the higher ups in the world, that gets you a slap on the wrist. That's why it was bombed. That's why the government building was bombed on a holiday when it was virtually empty. That was a warning. Two days before the bombings in uh, Oslo, poli uh, police and SWAT teams, whatever, in Oslo were conducting a bombing drill. The one or two days before the shootings at the youth camp, that same youth camp had held a pro Palestinian rally. Because, again, like I said, Norway supports the Palestinian state. And the fact that this bomber was whisked away to a private court. Authorities told you what he said, and Nick Mount said, Oh, well, he, he's insane. They don't, let, they don't let him speak. And they just whisk him away to a jail to where you never hear him. Never see him. Kind of fucking weird, isn't it? Does any of this add up to anybody? Because it doesn't fucking add up to me. And it's not just the alcohol talk, and trust me, I think it's plain I'm sober. It, it doesn't fucking add up to me. I really hope somebody's... Anyway. So yeah, that's basically all I have to say. The Norway bombings was a false flag terror operation. was a slap on the wrist to Norway for not going along with NATO. Jesus Christ. That's all I have to say for now. I got like 10 seconds left, so. Yeah. As for next time. Drink up.